Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about all the changes with the gases, the fluids and the liquids that came about with the new Space DLC update. So I have created a couple of different little setups that we're going to be testing out, explaining the changes and seeing how they all work and how they affect the current system. Now I am very much aware that there's a ton of broken creations with the new update. So before everyone goes and comments, oh, this is broken, my ship's broken. Honestly, most of my ships at least need a little bit of a touch up. I mean, all of them, to be honest, because now you can't even have a closed sort of space without needing some sort of ventilation and air. So at the minimum, you have to create ventilation so you're not drowning in CO2 or suffocating. But what I do like is that there is some sort of changes that are useful and really cool so i will go through that but yes there are broken creations i'm gonna make videos of having to update some of my creations and maybe give some of you tips on how to make your creations work properly again so first things first we have our new um, barometer so we could see in here right now we're at nine atmosphere or 0.9 atmosphere so almost one atmosphere inside this closed chamber and you can see here that it's consisting of air right carbon dioxide nitrogen and oxygen but what we're going to do is turn on this pump so now it's true and you can see it once i spin this valve here that it's going to start to increase the pressure inside this chamber now it's still all gas or rather well it is all gas and it's air which is like i said oxygen nitrogen and carbon dioxide so all of that is now increasing now this dial is just connected to the barometer but i have it here and i know it's here so we're now increasing the pressure in this chamber if i stop this it sort of tapers out and stops so now i have a pressurized vessel or chamber here and what we can do to relieve that pressure is by using this fluid end and that one inside and if i pull this you could see that now the barometer is dropping and it's going back down to ambient pressure which is in the world all around us which is about one i believe or just under one atmosphere and I think it depends on the altitude you are. So if you're higher up on a mountain, it's gonna be different than if you're down here. So that's kind of this system. And now you can turn on this pump and it's gonna be pressurizing because the pump is actually pumping in faster than this valve and port can sort of level out. So maybe you'd have to have another pump in this case to be pumping air in while you're pumping or pumping it out so you're not pressurizing but we are pressurizing so that's just a very simple vessel is what we call them in the industry or pressurized chamber so that's this okay next there are some really interesting things with the scuba gear that we learned and having to charge it up by using not just um electricity like you did previously but now you actually need to fill it with air. So I'm just gonna grab this and go for a little swim over here and use it up. If I put it back now, you see that it's at 89% air. Now this one is full, but we're not gonna worry about this one for now. This one's at 89% air. So you have a boat and you need to charge this thing up. Now previously you just connected to the electricity and you'd be good to go, but now you gotta add air. So here we have a small gas tank with an air combination. So you see here we got nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Pre presumably you could put pure oxygen in it, but if we just put air, spin this valve, and here we are, 90, and it's gonna be 91, and you can see that the oxygen is what is getting in out there. So really the nitrogen and the carbon dioxide are not entering into this gear. So ideally, or Preferably you'd have a little gas tank full just of oxygen. Now I'm gonna turn this valve to stop it. I'm gonna put this on and throw it off. Now I'm gonna put this guy here. So it now has 95% air here. Now again, 
there is some changes that the developers need to do. Like really that air should read oxygen because clearly it was just taking pure oxygen into this and not air, but let's just let it go for now. They're working and doing their best. Okay, but now this pump, if we turn it on, you see now the pump is on and your scuba gear, once we turn this valve, is gonna start charging up some 96 and 97 and so on. So you can do two methods of charging up your scuba gear on your boats. You could either have a bunch of gas tanks that you then do this, but then you'll probably still need a pump or some sort of uh, gas tanks that you could exchange or something. But anyway, the pump is probably the most um, convenient system because you just charge up your gear with that pump. Okay, that is how you're gonna do sort of these um, anything regarding the equipment that needs air. So that's going to include your space gear, which you could actually swim in. It's going to include all your diving stuff. So all that is chargeable or re rechargeable like this. Next, I just have a very simple demonstration for this um, chamber. So here we have a zero. So actually it's a vacuum. Whereas up here we have 82 atmospheres and gas will flow up or down, no matter where, if you turn this valve, it's gonna instantly level out. Now, it doesn't always happen instantly, but in this case, they're small enough that it did happen instantly. Okay, the next demonstration is actually sort of mobile um, gas tanks. Now, because I spawned this here um, as sort of a fixed creation, these two are just floating in midair, but realistically, these two tanks, or these two assemblies, you would be able to drag around to bring around. So I am even debating and wanting to make almost a crate or a container that can that is modular that you could toss into the back of a truck or whatever that just has a bunch of gas tanks and a valve and you could kind of re recharge, recharge and restore um, the gas or air or whatever in a vessel. For example, you'd have a diving vessel that has a bunch of these things. You could then attach a crate full of like 10 of these and they have pure oxygen and then you can use it and then replace it with another one. But anyway, for this example, what we have is this tank here. And now this tank, presume it is just able to f move around. You could throw it in the back of a truck. It's very light. So what you do is you equip your hose, you attach it to this and this and turn this valve. And here you go. You just pressurized it or well, you did pressurize it, but you now split the two um, amounts. Also, this one here just has um, air, but if you open this valve, it just uh, evened out to the ground. So this would be something to have, for example, in a mini sub that doesn't have an air system or a constant air supply. You can have reserve gas chambers, even one that you just drag in with you and throw it in and release it and get yourself some oxygen in your in your mini sub. So. That is sort of how I envision that you can do portable gas tanks, as well as permanent ones, of course. Okay, next we have a demonstration where we have 20 atmospheres and liquid in here. So we have seawater in here, and we have seawater in here. Now, what I've gathered is if I turn this dial, my amount of seawater starts to spill out. You can see the level dropping. If I stop it here, it stops as well. So now we have 200 here and 386 on this one. If I open this valve, that fluid will even itself out right at the level where that valve is. So as you can see here, it's leaving and this one here is filling up and probably, well not probably, for sure, once they're at the same level, they're gonna stop. Now, another interesting thing is that you can actually feed and make another system now sort of lose, lose its um, value by doing this. But now, also what we do have, if you open up this barometer, is a ton of pressure in this uh, chamber because we're not relieving any of this pressure. The, this fluid is almost vacuuming or rather pressurizing this chamber. But what we do not have down here is um, a filter. So what this is, is this valve allows everything through it. So now it's quickly dropping because we ran out of ox 
oxygen. We ran out of uh, the we ran out of fluid in here, so there's no more seawater or very minimal seawater, and now we're dropping pressure because the uh, air is going through here. So it's a little confusing, but you now have two individual new filters that you can use rather than the old depreciated filter and now even the other filter is depreciated now you just have this little guy or rather <laughs> this little guy here this is a gas relief valve so only gas can go through here only gas and we're going to talk about those later but anyways here we have it we are now balancing out the pressure here and here there is no more fluid so all of the seawater came out and I could even close this but it doesn't matter because as long as these are open in this case they're both closed but if I open this one this pressure will balance out to the atmospheric pressure so that's interesting to keep in mind because now as the liquids pouring out you're actually pressurizing the system so you'll have to you'll have to kind of go by feel on how that works but I've already noticed that it's affecting my mini subs my mini subs will no longer fill up a ballast tank because they're currently experiencing issues where the um, air gets so pressurized as you're trying to fill in water that it just stops filling in and you end up with half a ballast tank instead of a full ballast tank so you'll you'll definitely want to experiment with that and see how that all works okay in the next example here what we have in this first case is exactly that so I have a large fluid tank that has a bunch of seawater 600 and whatever 92 liters of seawater is it currently in here and what I'm gonna do is fill it up into this chamber here so I'm gonna turn this button on and turn this valve and you see that it starts to fill up so if I go here the fluid capacity is 406 and it's currently up to 390, 392, whatever. But if I go to my barometer, you can see that we're at 70, 90, 100 atmospheres. So that's getting pressurized. There's air at the top of this thing that is just getting the shooting up in pressure. And we're almost there. We're five liters away from being full here. But we have a very high um, air pressure, so it's just pushing back. Now, if I do open this valve up, You can see that my barometer is dropping. Actually, well, it's at 200 now. But what's really interesting, actually, and I kind of almost counterintuitive, the water level goes down and this refills. So even though I've opened up this valve, I've placed all of my water back in here. So I quite don't understand, in my opinion, the gas at the top should have left and it should have ended up that you had um, this chamber full. But I do have this example, which is the exact same thing with a bunch of valves this time. So let's start up our pump, turn this on, and now you can see that it's filling up and now if I pull this open, it should let the pressure release and I did that here too so I actually have a gas release valve here and a gas release valve here so now we filled it all up now water can't be compressed in this game so in this case now I have 1.3 atmospheres here and I have something crazy going on over here thousand atmospheres if I close that and if I close this what if I just close everything and stop the system I think that's actually happening because I had this pump on so the pump was on and it was causing this to skyrocket to thousand now we're like 600 or something but everything is closed and it's not making its way down so if I try this system again but I keep this open So you can see that it's dropping it down so again I quite don't understand the logic behind that in my opinion the air should have left the only thing I could think of is well no here it's almost two atmospheres so 
If someone understands fluid dynamics better than me, please feel free to interject. But as long as that valve is open, which would imply that things can leave, it doesn't quite make sense to me. So we still have 700. Oh, and also this was closed. No, it was open. Interesting. See, now we're filling up to a point, building up pressure. So that's something that we should explore a little more because now this this is how your ballast tanks get affected. So you need to maybe have pumps that pump in or pump out the air. I'm not quite sure to prevent it from pressurizing because now you'd only be able to use half of your um, ballast tank, which doesn't make any sense. You need to use the full thing. Um, so you would need some sort of pressure relief valve or a valve of any kind. Now this is, like I said, open, closed, dropping down. Anyway, over here, I have another system. This one, I have a gas tank at the top with air. I have this system here that has seawater and I have an atmosphere of 14. Now here I have both a gas and a liquid relief valve. So if I open this guy here, that's gonna let the liquid actually physically come out. So that's the, the water will come out. If I open the gas relief valve, the barometer is now dropping because we're level, leveling it out with the air pressure. But if I close this for now and open this, you'll see that the water level should start to lead to drop. But because we also have pressure, it's keeping it from leaving. It's almost sucking it up. Like have you ever put a cup upside down in a, in a tub of water? So it's not letting it fully come out. But if I turn this valve, now we're letting both air and water out. But if I turn this, now I've pressurized this whole system. And you can see that it's forcing the water down. So it's dropping ever so slightly. And again, this stuff with the combination of water and gas, or gas and liquid, is what's kind of throwing me off. Because over here it was just pure gas stuff and in the last example here we have this top chamber is full of seawater this bottom one is full of nothing if I open this valve this will start to fill up as you can see here but what's also happening is now this is a bit of a vacuum okay we're at ten, at one atmosphere over here we're dropping. Now if I open this valve up, this should work so much faster because now we're letting the gas leave and we should be pressuring ourselves or balancing ourselves out at atmospheric pressure. Now we're not quite, but it is dropping a little bit, which is I think explaining what's happening here. So now it is going down to the one where we're at, but this fluid is not fully dropping. So we may need to have this valve on both because you'd think now that this top chamber would entirely give away all of its gas or all of its, sorry, all of its water should not be in here anymore. It should fully be gravity fed into this system and that's it. So it's not really doing that. And it's not like the air is that pressurized that it's not, um, that it's compressing it, not letting it come out. So that's kind of interesting. Now over here, we got ourselves a little doghouse that we're gonna jump into. There's no light, there's nothing. There's just the one chamber. So if we're in here now, we're breathing. And as we breathe, our carbon dioxide level is gonna go up. That's what they talked about in the updates. So you actually, have this realism where you're now breathing and your oxygen level is dropping and your carbon dioxide level is increasing. So you won't 
starve yourself of air right away, but eventually you will. So that's definitely not good. Um, so you would have to have a, a way to have the um, this chamber open to the atmosphere, which is like a ventilation system. So if I turn this valve here, you can see now that the carbon dioxide level is dropping, the oxygen level is increasing, and here we have it. So now we are pressurized, or rather not pressurized, we're now fully open to that outside atmosphere and allowing the gas to come in and out as needed. So now we have a good level of carbon dioxide and we can breathe. Now we can close that. Now here I have another gas tank that just contains air. So if I open this up, we're going to start <laughs> to feel pressurized. And if I open this up, you fly out because it just, uh, that's, that's the suction that we that they talked about. If you kind of enter an, a pressurized area or leave an area that's too pressurized, you'll end up causing this type of uh, injury. So we flew out of there. That's kind of how you'd get sucked out. And we ended up getting a little injured. If we stayed in there, we would have been hurt more. So there we have it with these examples. Um, quite interesting especially some of this early stuff over there there's a little bit of confusion even on my part with how it works um, I would definitely need to explore it a little more because that's going to dictate all of my creations but one thing that I found super cool if I just kind of get myself into this thing there we go Seat seated so now I've opened up the bottom of the diving bell and it has this kind of door frame, but no door, just a door frame. So if I lower the um, bell down, you can see here that the water level stayed there, even though the water level is technically at, at the top. We're floating down here and we have this nice um, moon pool so you're actually able to create um, a working pressurized moon pool that does not let air come in, or rather, sorry, does not let water flood in. So we could then swim out, go out here, and you could swim in and come into your moon pool. So that is awesome. I could see that being very useful for all kinds of creations from submarines to big motherships that have a launch. But now what happens if I open this, if I could just find the way to open it. Nope, doesn't want to open, but that's fine. I imagine if I open that, it would also end up flooding this compartment, not only through there, but it would lose that whole, the reason that it is um, pressurized. And the water would come, obviously. Ah, it was because I was seated. It's because I was seated. There we go. So now we're flooding it, and up comes the water. So the air has fully left, and we're flooding it. But look at that. So it surpassed the level of the door, and now this area up here where I'm breathing is pressurized. So because there's no relief valve up here, there's nowhere for this air to go. So we're breathing away up here. But the only thing to note is that once um, the air runs out and you're left with just carbon dioxide or once the oxygen runs out, then you're going to start to feel uh, lightheaded and all that stuff. So it is interesting how they've implemented this literally in the same game. They went ahead and did a change that was quite drastic, whether it's the right call or not. I really appreciate what they did because now it adds that much more engineering even into this because now there's totally new things to have to think about and this is one of them so here we are just kind of sitting in our little air pocket or air bubble up here while down there is fully flooded with water like i said i'm gonna make videos about how i fix my ships to make them worthy again and work and all that good stuff but i just want to give a quick little demonstration to what i've did what i did for the walrus here so the walrus has three compartments. This is one of them. Then it has the bedroom down here. And then it has sort of this little storage area. So I went ahead and added 
a bunch of these gas relief valves all over the place. So this chamber has one. This chamber has one right here going through this vent. And up here I've not created one yet, but it would be in here somewhere. I just didn't find a good spot for it. So maybe it'll be like in the ceiling somewhere here. Just gonna affect kind of the look of the build, but it is what it is. Anyway, with that in mind now, this creation should work, at least in the sense of um, needing air as you go and stuff. But take a look at that. So currently the engines are not working, so there is some sort of issues. Oh, I did put a fluid port up here. Anyway, there is definitely parts that are broken with the game currently. It's unfortunate, but it's just one of those things, drawbacks of the current um, update that's so drastic and major. So bear with the developers. I know they're doing their best. I was sort of in contact with developers over the last little while regarding this new update. So I am stoked for them to have it out and presented and I'm loving it so far, even if some things don't work, but my vehicles, my cars work. So I'm able to use them. Um, and we will see to get the ships back up and running as soon as possible. And that includes the ballast tanks and then the engines and all that good stuff. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, for more content. And as always, happy stormworksing, everyone.